Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making uh, some items out of old books. So uh, you're going to need very little materials for this one, uh, but you are going to want your books to be aged. So um, to do that, I just soak them uh, in some strong coffee for about an hour, or not an hour, uh, actually about half of an hour and just kind of thumb through it the best you can to get the pages all opened up uh, because you'd be surprised at how you can miss pages. Uh, you would think that it would just kind of soak into everything but uh, it is very necessary to open the pages as much as possible. So uh, this is one that I have aged and it kind of came apart, which I love because uh, I'm just going to make this be some decor that uh, just some old, that looks like some old paperwork tied together and just laying around. And I love that look. Um, I'm not a big fan of stacked books, but um, I do... I do love uh, old pamphlets and things like that. And as you can see down the side there, it just looks like there's several pamphlets together. So I just took some vintage lace here and just am tying a, a bow around it. And as you can see, I stamped the front. And I think that I used just a row step that I had that I've had for years and years. And and then I stamped some script on, script on the front from the set I See Paris. And so I just tied that around and then I found some actual old paperwork and it's just a little postcard and then a little pamphlet and just kind of stuck in the front and it just looks like you've got some old paperwork lying around and I just really like that look. So obviously that's a very simple thing that you can do with it. Uh, but then we're going to take the individual pages and some book some hardback books and make uh, some other items with it and the first thing that I'm going to make is a birdhouse and I've seen these on Pinterest many many times and have been wanting to do them for a while now these are not actual old books here they're just some that I kind of painted I had started uh, working on them and didn't finish so I'm going to use these as my side uh, the books for the side and then the front book book needs to be taller than the ones on the side and I wish that I'd had one that was even taller than this one because I needed it to be taller but I came up with another idea that would allow it to be shorter so I'm just using the front and back cover of these and I'm just using a little box cutter here and cutting the front and back cover off and then I need these to have a roof pitch on them so I measure to the center of the top and then I measure three inches down on each side so that I can make my pitch now you could make your pitch whatever height you wanted that's just the height that I wanted and um, again, I just kind of measure to the center and then I drew those first two lines. Um, I drew a line between them and my center of the top and that will make me a perfect pitch. So I cut that out for the front and the back. In order to do that, I use my box cutter again and use my ruler as the guide and then it just kind of breaks off. So here is how they go together. As you can see, I can't go all the way to the bottom. So what I decided to do was go ahead and glue it toward the top. And then, uh, then the two sides will act as, a, a, as legs for it. And so this little birdhouse will be on legs. Now, 
I know this is not an actual birdhouse. No bird is going to be able to stay in this because it can't be outside. Uh, this is just kind of an idea, and I could see it being used in, uh, in a library or uh, just displayed on the top of a bookshelf that you have your books uh, displayed in. I just thought this was a neat idea. I've always liked it, but I had never tried to make one. So this one's not going to be perfect. Again, I'm not using old books, and I think it would look much better if you used old books. Uh, but, but I do like how this one turns out, and I'm just kind of doing a makeshift one here. As you can see, I'm adding some uh, masking tape to the inside to help it hold together better. And then I'm just using hot glue to glue everything else together. But I think this was fun to make. And uh, the possibilities are endless with these because you could do, uh, you could paint them. You could do transfers on them. Um, but again, I think they would look much better if you used actual vintage books and just left whatever was on the book. Um, on this but again I'm just making do here so I'm just using what I have and these books I didn't even age uh, the pages of I just aged down uh, on the outside of the pages so that what is showing when it's put together will be aged and now at this point, and I'm not doing it yet, but at this point, the way you do the roof is you just open a book um, and lay it across the top. And you could glue that if you wanted. I'm not going to glue it. I'm just going to leave it just like it is and uh, just kind of dra drape that over the top. So if you wanted, you could, you could use a book on top that you didn't really want to mess up because you don't have to do anything to it. So as you can see, this lifts that up and uh, the two side books will act as legs uh, for the birdhouse. And then obviously it's gonna need a bottom. So I just cut um, another piece uh, from another book to fit the bottom. And then I just glued that on with hot glue. Now there's going to be some seams that need to be co covered because uh, hot glue is going to kind of make a mess in places. Uh, but everywhere that needs to be covered, I'll just trim that out in something. And I'm going to start by putting a resin mold on the front of this. And this is just one of the trim molds from um, Redesign with Prima, I think. And, um, and I'm just... I uh, put that across the bottom. I didn't put it other places because that's too um, large of a mold, too wide actually, and I didn't want it to be very substantial. I just want to hide some of these seams without taking away from the look of the books. And now I'm just taking some sandpaper and just uh, sanding around all those edges to neaten them up. So I decided to not do any extra painting on this, just, just to work with the colors that I have, but I did want to paint that trim piece on the bottom to match uh, the book in the front, because again, I don't want the, mul the uh, trim pieces to take over and take away from the look of the book. So uh, I just went over it with the color caviar, which is just a dull black, and then, um, and then I'm gonna add some transfers, and these are just pieces of some Dixie Belle transfers, and I'm not even sure which uh, which transfer set they come from. When I get to a certain point on my, my transfers and I don't have that many left, I just cut them apart and store them in a container with some other ones. Uh, so I'm not real sure which one this is. I just wanted some uh, some white flowers. I didn't want to introduce too much color to this. I just want to kind of bring the lighter books, um, the look of the lighter books to the front, if that makes sense. So I'm just adding some transfers here, and then, um, and then I'm going to add some black 
and white transfers to the sides so that that will transfer uh, that will add some um, of the black to the sides so I just felt like if I added some of the lighter colors in the front uh, it would kind of bring that look to the front and then do the same thing with the sides and that would bring the dark over to the sides and that just kind of helps it balance out some and I know there's many things I could have done differently on this I didn't even look at the instructions I just kind of figured it out and um but I, I don't think that there's only one way to do these and I don't think it matters how many pains you take with it you're not going to be able to leave this outside so as long as you make it sturdy enough uh, for a decor piece I think that there's a, a number of things that you could do to make this work now I felt like this needed a little bit more light on the front so I just took some script from a script from a French stencil that I had and added that to the top and now I'm gonna uh, trim out the roof line and that will help take care of the seam uh, that I'll have and cover up any hot glue that might be showing and I'm going to do that on both the front and the back and that will help hide that little seam and again it adds more light so it's kind of helping to balance the dark front with the light sides so I'm just kind of wrapping uh, that around the rough edge and here I am doing it on the back as well and then I wanted to hide the seams down the side uh, but I didn't want that to show up so what I did was uh, just used uh, this black satin ribbon a very thin black satin ribbon and I covered all the other areas uh, that might uh, be unsightly uh, so that I could just kind of hide those without taking away from the look that I wanted so I did that on all the remaining areas and then I'm using another stencil and just um, just stenciling a line or two from uh, on each side of the books because I felt like uh, where I had painted them they needed a little something on the spine and I'm just stenciling this with a makeup brush and some stays on ink and you could actually use any ink you wanted here uh, but I do get asked a lot about my makeup brushes that I use and I will link those in the description now here I'm just covering up the spine of the book that I'm laying across the top. And the only reason for that is I just didn't like the look of it. So uh, I just put the lace across it and that's all that I did to that book. Now I felt like I needed a little perch. Uh, so I am screwing and gluing uh, a little knob that I just had laying around the shop. Uh, to the front and because it had kind of a coppery and bronzy look to it uh, then I'm going to take my bronze gilding wax and just add rub a little here and there on the uh, birdhouse just to kind of give it um, to bring that look to it because I felt like just that metallic finish there being the only thing that was metallic uh, would kind of stand out too much so that's the only reason I did just a little bit of gilding I put most of that gilding on my trim piece on the bottom and then I just use my finger to rub the gilding wax on and I'm not real careful about it at all I just want just a little touch of it but I really like how it turned out and again I, I could have done so much more with this and there's so many things that you could do uh, but I just wanted to try one and see how it worked and uh, I think it turned out pretty cute and next I'm gonna make some little book page sunflowers so I took some of those pages that I had antiqued ahead of time by dipping them in the coffee and uh, once they dried out really well then I cut them in little squares and the size is not 
that important. I think it needs to be around three inches, but I just cut down the center of where the words are there and then made that a square. So um, that was a good size uh, for me to work with. You don't want to go too small because it's too hard to work with, but you don't want to go too long either because these are going to be small-ish flowers. Now, what I looked for was the little plastic bracelets that you can buy very cheap. Uh, usually, Walmart has them and uh, um, the Dollar General and even, I think, the Dollar Tree even carries them. But for some reason, I went all over and was not able to find them. So, I found these little metal shimmery ones at Walmart. And I think I paid $5.88 for 12 of them, so about 50 cents each. I was hoping not to have that much in them, but I really wanted to do this video, and I had this in mind. So this is just something that I kind of came up with, and it, it worked out really well. So what I did is I cut those squares, and then I folded each side over. And... As you can see, I folded one corner to the center and the other corner to the center and left, the, left it long. And then I twisted it together in the center and then, uh, or not twisted it, I pinched it together in the center. And then as you can see, I fold it over the inside of the ring, if that makes sense. So uh, I am... And I don't, when I glue it, I don't glue the, the pointy edges. I just glue that center that I'm going to be wrapping around that little ring. And so I just kind of do that all the way around this little ring. Now you could do this in a larger, um, you could find a larger ring, like maybe half of a embroidery hoop, uh, but... I just want these as um, to put in a little tin can craft that I'm doing. So uh, I'm just making this resemble a sunflower. As you can see, it's very simple to do. Uh, you actually want don't want to use a real old book here because as books age, the pages start to get crisp, crisp and uh, you know, trying to twist this or pinch it and fold it, you would be likely to break your page. So you definitely want to just age your page instead of using an actual old page. But as you can see, that looks like little sunflower petals here. And now we need to address the center. So what I do is I take that same, one of those same rings, and I cut two pieces from uh, from some burlap and and I cut them a little bit larger than the ring and then I'm going to just glue it to one side so I just take some hot glue but I'm adding a stick that I found in the yard because I'm going to put these on sticks so I just put the stick on there first and then glued that back on so that's going to be my back and then to make the front, I'm going to stuff that center with a little bit of polyfill, and then I'm going to um, take another circle, the other circle that I cut, and I'm going to glue it all the way around. Now, you want enough polyfill so that you have, uh, you have some dimension there in the front. So, um, you're just going to glue that all the way around and add. And then, once you get that glued all the way around, you could stop right there if you wanted. But uh, I wanted to add just a little bit more to it. So what I did was I took a permanent marker and then I just drew stitches all the way around the uh, burlap. Now, what you could also do is take that permanent marker and you could draw some little, um, X's, little bitty X's, kind of to resemble seeds in the center uh, of your um, of your um, burlap. But again, I just drew some little makeshift stitches here, uh, just to add a little bit of dimension and to uh, kind of separate the colors a little bit better, add a little bit of contrast. Is mainly what I felt like it needed. 
So now I have my flower made, but I want to do some leaves. So what I did was I folded a piece of burlap and then I cut out a leaf, uh, but I left just a little bit to connect them. And then I wrapped that around my stick and that made my little leaf. So, and I just kind of stuck them in uh, some floral foam in a little tin can and made one a little bit shorter than the other. And those were just really simple flowers to do and I think they'll work well for fall, but not be limited to fall. So now for the next item that I'm gonna do is a, I'm gonna do a wreath and this is gonna be a larger wreath and I'm gonna show you here how I did the leaves on it. So uh, I took a full page here and folded one corner down to the edge and that will make my square. So then I cut um, all of the squares this size and you're gonna need several squares here. So this one is gonna be a little bit more time consuming, but as you can see, I folded the corners over uh, so that I would have a point on both sides, but both my corners were folded over the top of each other. So once I got enough of these folded, and I'm not sure exactly how many I used, uh, but once I got them all folded, then uh, I start to add them to my wreath form. And there you can see again what I did to make these. And no, I haven't done anything to hurt my hand. I'm just having some carpal tunnel issues that that uh, flares up every now and then, and I just kind of baby it for a little while. I'm sure most of you have dealt with that. So here is my wreath form, and this is one that I got from the Dollar Tree. Uh, it's kind of a larger one, so uh, you may want to start with a smaller one. Uh, but I just pinch it together, and just like I did on my little bracelet, I just fold these over and hot glue them together. And then, so I'm going to go all the way around the outside and all the way around the middle part and then all the way around the center. And that's going to take several of these little pages but uh, it doesn't take very long to do uh, but um, I have to hold mine a little bit longer to to stick because I'm using a low temp glue gun and I do recommend using a low temp glue gun because um, you want you're going to be handling this a lot and you don't want to handle that really hot glue so again, I'm just going to um, add these all the way around the outside and all the way around the inside and then, um, or the middle, and then all the way around the inside. And it will make it very fluffy and you can kind of push them even closer together if you want. Uh, I found that just having them touching what would make it fluffy enough and so I didn't really push it together a whole lot. I just made sure that all the wire was covered on each level. And again, this was very time consuming, but I did enjoy making it. It's not hard at all to make. But I'm not gonna make you watch me do this all the way around. Again, I just covered the, the whole thing and then I made a little, um, a little shabby bow to go on the bottom and there I added a little book hang tag but I just love how that turned out um you could do these in just regular flat pages that would be pretty also but I love the color of the um of the coffee stained pages and I also think it would be pretty if you did some of your pages a little bit lighter and gave it more dimension that way but this will be a beautiful wreath to display in the fall. Uh, and again, it's not just limited to fall. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to add a fall project to the end. Although a lot of these have been fall-ish, uh, I'm going to add a pumpkin 
uh, with the same theme. So what I did was I tore some strips uh, from, um, from a book page. And on the left there, I tore them in little pieces. And then I decided that I wanted to tear out little lines of words. So I probably have two to three lines of words on each of those strips. And I didn't worry with tearing it out exactly. If I tore into another line, that's fine. But what I wanted it to be like is I want those lines of words to be up and down so that um, at any given place on the pumpkin, you can read those lines. I just felt like it would have a lot better look if I did this. What did make it a little bit more time consuming. Uh, so this is not one that you could really come out on. Uh, this is just more for yourself or to give as a gift, but you're not going to recoup your time on this one because I get about $6 for this size pumpkin, and I, I've already sold this one actually. But... Um, but you're not going to get your time back. Sometimes I'll spend a little bit more time on an item just because I'm already at the shop. And um, and I know I'm probably not going to recoup as much of my time. But uh, I just like to kind of introduce new things. And, and again, I have to be there anyway. But this is definitely not one that you're really going to make money on I don't think obviously you're not going to have anything hardly in your materials I just have a dollar and something in in the little pumpkin from the dollar tree and then uh, and then these little torn pages and a little bit of Mod Podge so it, it is a very cheap project to do but again not worth the time so I just keep gluing these up and down. They form well to the pumpkin because they're so thin, uh, but I just make sure to go up and down with them all the way around until I cover the whole pumpkin. And then once I get the whole pumpkin covered, then I'm left with the hole in the top. And I forgot to mention that on these, they come orange and I base painted it white I wouldn't have had to on this one, uh, but I always uh, base coat them that way that whatever I do to them will work. And because this hole is uh, too large where I just pulled that top off, um, sometimes it pulls off a little better and you're in, you end up with a small hole, but in this case, it was a larger one. And I need to fill that little area in. So what I'm doing is just gluing some Spanish moss down in the hole and around the little stem until I get that all covered well and my stem is very secure. And then because I wanted this to have kind of a themed look, then um, I just made my hang tag to resemble a little book and tied that around the top. And again, this one already sold. My friend Debbie came and bought it. Uh, but I won't be making another one this year like this. And if you guys haven't checked out your uh, local Dollar Tree or wherever you can buy these little foam pumpkins cheap, it is a very good value because there's so many things that you can do with them. And I've been going... Uh, usually a couple times a week to to see when they start to get those in because my dollar tree doesn't have them in yet they've started to trickle some of their fall things out but uh, they don't have those yet i'm only using the ones that i had left over from last year but here are all my items again i, I really like that wreath i think it has a very fall look to it you could add some more fall touches instead of that shabby bow but although i love the look of it and it does have a fall look to it i wouldn't i wouldn't put it on the front door because uh, the dampness it would draw dampness and i don't know how well it would hold up uh, with that damp air 
But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.